The place we are going right now is called Kamati Pura, the in uh, like <laughs> Mumbai's most infamous red light area where we are born and brought up everything. Mm -hmm. So there is usually the brothel place you can say. spent my 16, 17 years over there, I was born there. We didn't have any education about sex, about good touch, bad touch. So didn't have any knowledge that I was raped at the age of 10. Your background is never your weakness. It's always your strength. I always thought that it's, it's my weakness, but after coming to Kranti, you get so many opportunities that I realized that my background is never my weakness. It's just my double strength, I could say. It's, it's completely my strength. I'm one of the co-founders of Kranti, and Kranti empowers girls from Mumbai's red light areas to become agents of social change. I am a teacher at the school here, and we basically work with teenage girls ages 12 to 20 um, who are from Mumbai's biggest red light area, Kamatipura. They're either girls who have been trafficked, daughters of sex workers, or girls who are just born and raised in Kamatipura red light area. Kranti means revolution in Hindi and we call our girls revolutionaries or Krantikaris and uh, basically the idea was that we want to revolutionize everything about sex work in India, about the way that these girls are looked at in India, um, the way that society treats them, you know, a phrase that they hear all the time, you know, in Hindi is Randi ki beti, Randi banegi, or a whore's daughter is only going to be a whore. And that's kind of the expectation that everyone's always had for them. It's what they've heard their entire lives. And, you know, these girls really, like, they have so much potential and, you know, the ability to become absolutely anything that they want. But not just becoming, you know, in terms of, like, career-wise or whatever, but they really, really are agents of social change. And we really want to um, kind of harness their power as agents of social change and, you know, unleash them on the world so that they can kind of revolutionize so much about India. The thing is, a life of a sex worker or a life Because of the different literacy levels and everything that's in our classroom, it's really hard to just work from, you know, get out this textbook and, you know, turn to page so-and-so and, you know, find this lesson and go read it. Um, so we really have a fun time integrating everything that Mumbai has to offer into, into their curriculum. Um, whether it's, you know, theater or film festivals, um, going out to research uh, the one and only Jewish center in Mumbai or, you know, whatever it may be. After that first initial hour of, you know, yoga, meditation, journals and everything, we do just a few minutes of creative thinking exercises, puzzles, logic puzzles and games, some news and geography. Anything that you want to write about, um, it can be about your day, um, sometimes we just assign like a, a random topic for journaling, um, but it's just a way for them to be able to like write about um, what's going on in life, what they're thinking about, what they're feeling, um, that kind of thing. And it's just completely, um, you can write in Hindi, you can write in English, um, it's just also writing practice as well. Somebody looks over the journals and just kind of gives them a little bit of like guidance on, you know, improving English or whatever it might be that they're working on. And then every day after that for two hours, there's a different theme for every day. So Monday is Music Day, um, TED Talk Tuesdays, Worldly Wednesdays, Thinking Thursdays, and Field Trip Fridays. We do have a lot of science programs as well. So on Thinking Thursdays, um, every other week almost, we have a science experiment that somebody comes in to do with the kids. So there's, you know, um, we did science camps with them for a while as well. Today, for example, was Music Monday, um, and we uh, looked at one artist, MIA. What we did today was start with some energetic vocabulary. Usually I just go through and pick out a good five to 10 words that they can catch, you know, that day. Um, so they basically have to listen to the song a couple times and fill in the blanks of the words that are missing. 
After that, we um, did this other song, which is called Borders, and it's basically about the refugee crisis. The task was, um, you know, in the song, she just has these very simple li lyrics about, you know, borders, what's up with that? Politics, what's up with that, you know? And then you have to create your own, what's up with that song? So a couple of the girls said they want to talk about sex work, a couple of the girls are going to do, you know, different kind of issues, whether it's, you know, abuse or something that they faced that to them is this very like, what's up with that, man? She just wished on this thing about learning about the world, learning about everything and becoming a good person. It is very meaningful music, whatever we learn, from through which we learn many things like that help us in our life to apply. Now a special play performance in Mumbai called the Lal Bhatti Express which sets this play apart is the performers are all children of sex workers. <laughs> I think that what's really awesome about our ability to use music and TED Talks and all of these things is how much we're able to connect it to their lives. Every single lesson that we have, the girls say, hey, that's, you know, that's me and blah, blah, blah. Hey, that's my mom coming from Bangladesh. Hey, that's, you know, um, we even talked about this art change mindsets. And, you know, the girls said, what are we trying to do with our theater program? That's what we're trying to do, right? Um, so, you know, these are things that they connect with very, very heavily. And I think that that's what really sinks the lesson in for them. Um, she's saying that she really enjoys, um, she gets to choose what she wants to do here and she really enjoys, her two favorite things here are theater and drawing. And her thing for me is, is like, you know, the person with glasses. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, she's just... She's saying um, she feels really close to me, um, that she's able to communicate with me and stuff and share with me. We really strive to help these girls find what their passion and talent is and turn that into something that's a sustainable career. One girl named Shweta, she actually uh, went to university in uh, New York at Bard College and at the time she was the first girl from a red light area ever to study abroad from India. We do have a lot of students who are never going to succeed academically, kids with too many mental health issues, with you know learning disabilities, um, you know so many different disorders and stuff and then you start to ask you know, if this person's never going to succeed, are they not worthwhile as a human being or as a student? Um, of course they are. And what are they going to bring to the world? Their happiness and their compassion. And that is the best thing that they can offer, that any person can offer, regardless of how successful you are academically or business-wise or whatever. In the end, the people who spread positivity in this world are people who are happy and compassionate. <laughs>